हेलो जय श्री माता जी जय श्री माता जी अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी वन वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग मेडिटेशन लेट्स ऑल कलेक्टिवली बाउ डाउन 
raise our kundalini and put ourselves in bandhan. We will take Shri Ganesh Mantra. Oh, Dwarme Vasakshan, Shri Ganesh Sakshan, Shri Adi Shakti Mataji, Shri Nirmala Deve Namo. Shri Kartikeya Oh, Sameva Sakshat, Shri Kartikeya Sakshat, Shri Adi Shakti Mataji, Shri Nirmala Deve Namo Namaha. Shri Gauri Ganesh. Om Dvame Vasakshat Shri Gauri Ganesh Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Deve Namo Namaha Shamarta Ji, by your grace, I am innocent. Please make me like Shri Ganesha. Please bless us with the joy of Brahmananda. Please remove all the evil and animal tendencies from within me. Please 
please bless me with complete fearlessness, surrender and devotion of Sri Ganesha. Please fill each and every cell of our being with the nectar of your divine love. Om Kam Ganapataye Namaha Om Kam Ganapataye Namaha Om Kam Ganapataye Namaha Om Kam Ganapataye Namaha Right hand on our heart. Shamataji, I bow down to the eternal spirit within me, which is truth, awareness, and pure bliss. Prata Namami Riddhi. Sanspura tatatvam, sat chet sukham, paramahansa gatim turiyam, yet swapna jagat, sushupta mavaiti nityam, tad brahma, nishkalamaha, nachabhuta sangha. We can raise our attention to Vishuddhi and give Pandhan to Vishuddhi. Shamataji, please establish me in the state of detached witness. Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Sakshi Rupena Sanskrita Namastase, 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 namo namaha. We can press our Agya. Shabmataji. By your grace, I forgive everyone, including myself. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. Attention on Sastra. Shamataji. Please establish my self realization. Please connect me to the all pervading power of your divine love. Help me become an instrument of spreading your divine love. O oh, divine, please raise me higher, higher than my thoughts, doubts, conditionings, ego and superego. Please keep me in reality.
the awareness of the hell. They always think of destruction, of destroying others or overpowering others or of destroying themselves. There are many groups you know who destroyed themselves, just like that they killed themselves. These are all the people who are on the other side of the ascent. So when you start rising higher and higher into these chakras and when the Kundalini rises through all these chakras and goes up beyond the uh, Sahasrara, as you call it, the Brahmarandra, here, you become a subtler being. Like your human attention, say, we can say, it's like cloth here. And now the Kundalini is pushing it upward, upward like that. So all your attention which is outside goes inside. And when it pierces through from here, this piercing makes the attention subtle because the subtle that is around, which you do not feel normally, starts penetrating into it. It starts covering your attention. And that's how we say, now your attention is enlightened, and now it is enlightened, not just talk, but it becomes enlightened with collective consciousness. You become collective consciousness. Then such people, when they talk, when they talk, they have such a personality, such a knowledge, they become knowledge. They have no problems, they become knowledge because they become the Absolute. But it is for you to decide, what are you seeking in life? What do you want in life? What is your life worth? If you want to cheapen your life, waste it for something very cheap and ordinary, useless, then you can go ahead. But if you think your life is important as a human being, should be, because you have become from amoeba to this stage as a human being, not to waste it, not to throw it away uselessly, but to become the Spirit. That's what you have come on this earth for and that's what should happen to you. Now, the main problem with human beings is that there are barriers we have for. To accept anything we have barriers, but there is nothing to be accepted. In Sahaja Yoga you need not accept anything whatsoever, but you should not also deny. If you deny, I cannot raise your Kundalini, I cannot. You should allow your mind to be open to get re realized. Because one reason is there, why you have to do that more? Because you do not know about Kundalini. People told me they don't know even what Self-realization is. Imagine, in India, when my grandchild was born, we had our uh, astrologer in my husband's place about 2,000 miles away from where the child was born. He sent a telegram saying that this child has found her Guru, guru Sadhguru in the household. It was such a great thing to find a Sadhguru who will give, uh, give realization to the child. To us it is the most important thing. In a horoscope the first thing they'll ask, will, shall we get Self-realization in this lifetime or not? Then they say, all right, this life, left time you might. Maybe next lifetime, then they think, oh God, we have to wait one lifetime more. <laughs> and all the action is surrounding that, the whole behavior, that you must try to check your attention, chitta nirodha, try to check your attention. Wherever it wants to go, just keep it out. While here it is, what's wrong? So what? If you want to jump in the sea, so what? Who are you to tell us? It's not that. There it is, you must control your attention. Control your attention. Keep the attention pure. If your attention is not pure at the time of realization, there will be a problem. It's a just a different attitude towards life. If somebody is angry, here people always say, I hate you. I mean, in India if a child says like that, he'll have two slaps on the face. It's regarded bad manners to even to think like that, that you hate anyone. To hate anyone is a sign of degraded personality. I mean, it's very common with Indian people. Whatever you know of Indians are the people who are uprooted, who have come here to make dollars. They are different people. They are sort of sieved out. But the people who are in India, now we have here at least twenty percent people who have been to India. You can ask them. To them, generosity is a quality. Righteousness is a quality. Purity is a quality. Quietitude is a quality. Peaceful nature is a quality. They do not boast of their angers and they do not boast of their hatred at all. I mean, it is never, never, never done. Even if somebody hates you, he will not say that, I hate you. 
And I, it took some time for me to even to say this sentence to people. That this is something prohibited because it, your tongue gets spoiled. If your tongue is spoiled and impure, then whatever you say becomes untrue. Your tongue must be pure. You should not say something which is not true. In the sense, true doesn't mean that supposing somebody is a person who to your mind is not a good person. You shouldn't say that. You need not say that you are not a good person, you just keep quiet, let him discover. Because if he's bad, he'll suffer himself. This is a common attitude. I'm not talking for Indians, but I must say for spiritual life one has to learn from them. Some of them who were thugs must have come here to Newton. That's a different point. I mean, I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry. But I also blame you for your naiveness. I came much before that. But I said, you are not to pay to anyone any money, nobody listened to me. They didn't like me at all when I said that. So you, you, you had to suffer. I, I know it was wrong, but it happened. Now at least people should realize that purity can only be achieved through Self-realization. Innocence can be awakened within you on the first chakra. On the first chakra you develop innocence. In the second chakra you develop creativity. I've known people who never used to sing have started singing very well, who never used to create anything have started creating beautiful paintings, they have become great painters now, very well-known painters, musicians, those who were never doing architecture have become great architects and who have not, never done any interior decoration have achieved a lot. So to say that uh, we are very creative, one must know that you have limited energy and for that you have to be connected to the main so that all the time the energy is flowing into you. Then on top of that is the third center, which is the center of your seeking. So whatever you were seeking, was not all right. But you do get your material well-being, no doubt. You do get your material well-being, but up to a point where you feel absolutely satisfied about it, you don't need anything anymore. You also get a great blessing of dignity and divinity. You get a proper understanding of your being. You become like a king. For a king, what we call the emperor, he doesn't need it. For example, as you know, I'm born of a very rich family and it's a royal family and my husband also is a very rich man, it's all right. And we live in a very great comfort, no doubt, but I can sleep anywhere. I can sleep on the street, I can live anywhere. I'm not bothered where I live, what I do, how I move, I have no problem. Because if you are the emperor, you don't ask for anything, do you? If you get the food all right, if you don't get all right. If you uh, like some food or don't like food, somebody says, I've said, I don't know what I eat in the morning, I don't know what I'm going to eat now. I don't know if I had my lunch or not. If I've had all right, otherwise you can do what you like. It's that simple. Your body becomes your slave. You can lie down anywhere you feel like, you can do any amount of traveling, you can uh, do thousand and one things. You become so dynamic. <coughs> That happens when your Lakshmi Tattva is a reason. There are four Lakshmi Tattvas within us. It's the first is the Lakshmi Tattva, where you become a person very dignified and endowed with material comforts. But comfort which kills you is not there. Comfort means you are materially no more bothered. You get jobs. In London we have so many jobless people. But in Sahaja Yoga, all those who are there, all of them have got jobs, all of them. It's difficult to find one person who hasn't got the job. Moreover, it is compulsory in Sahaja Yoga that those who stay in the ashram must have some jobs. We have tried to allow some people to come without that, but we had very bad experiences of such people. So all those who are living on dole or some sort of a thing, we don't allow them to come in the ashram. And you'll be surprised that as soon as they join Sahaja Yoga, they get jobs. And they get better and better jobs because Krishna has said, yoga kshema vaham miham. When you get your yoga, your well-being will be looked after. He didn't say kshema yoga, he didn't say, I look after your 
well-being and then you go to yoga. No, first yoga. Yoga kshema vahamyam. First you get the yoga and then the kshema will work. That's what happens to you on the Nabi Chakra, which is very important. But Raja Lakshmi, that is you become like a king, that you become Graha Lakshmi or Grahastha, means you become a householder, you become a good wife and a good husband, you develop proper feelings for each other and you develop proper feelings for your children. You improve your societies through that essence, if it is born in you, that you understand the importance of a good family life. And that automatically happens, you don't have to tell anybody, just those people who hated each other after coming to Sahaja Yoga have started loving each other, understanding and enjoying each other. And married life in Sahaja Yoga is tremendous. Ninety percent of married life is so great that people in America where they divorce third year, every third year, we have seen people are doing very well in the married life, even in America. <laughs> Even here, the, you see this mental projection, the wife is no good and husband no good, all vanishes, you become the spirit, you start enjoying the deeper significance of marriage. Then comes the fourth side of the Lakshmi Tattva, is the fourth side, is the uh, ascending side. The people who have got more money are fed up and now want to have something beyond. In the same way, in Sahaja Yoga, when you start moving, then you find that nothing but spiritual life gives you real joy. So you just don't care for anything else but the spiritual life. And what is the spiritual life of Sahaja Yoga is that you become the light and you give light to others. Selflessly, there is no selfish motive in it. Just because you are the light, you become the light. You don't see the light, you become the light and you give light to others and just do it selflessly, without charging any money, without asking for anything, you just start giving what you have got, spontaneously, without paying for it. You just do it in a way that is a saintly way. A saints always spend their own money, always have spent their own money to give joy to others. They have never taken money from anyone. I mean, I have not heard of any saint who has built a big, uh, palaces and big places and big organizations, never. That's not a sign of a saint. A saint just emits compassion. And this compassion doesn't speak, it is silent. This compassion acts. It doesn't speak, it acts. When it acts, it, it works out wonders. That's what you know when Christ was touched by some lady, he said, some energy has flown through me. That is what it is, that the energy starts flowing through you and you do not do anything, it just happens automatically. Without doing anything, you achieve it. So for today, I think I have come up to the Nabi Chakra. Tomorrow I'll tell you about other chakras in better uh, uh, elaborate way that you will understand what is the essence of these chakras that what becomes of you. They have described to you the chakras, but why these chakras? What do they mean? These are the different evolutionary milestones within us which have been crossed and the last one is this one which you have to cross now, that's all. See, you are just ready for it, you are made for this, God has made you for this, it's best is that you get to it. And that's why uh, I was yesterday asking questions and people have now told me, Mother, don't ask questions because it's a waste, it's a waste of time. Those people who are asking questions are not asking any sensible questions, they are not bothered about themselves by how they are spending their lives. Of course, some people ask very sensible questions also, I must say, but there's no need to ask questions, let us see if it works out within you. If it works out, will be a good idea. Now, you want to have realization? First.
Shemataka, please keep us in the pain you would like us to be. We'll be taking the Mahamantras. Shri thank you for this morning meditation. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for showing us the way for emancipation of humanity. We can collectively bow down, put ourselves in bandhan. Jai Shri Mataji, everyone.